There we go. Now you, that we have near. Mm -hmm. Well, sitting in there. New, New Dale doesn't have their TVs on. Okay. There they start coming in. Hey, Mr. Rathburn. He's been my facilitator there. And actually, my facilitator at New Deal is a former student I taught there, college English too, both freshman and sophomore lab, so. They show up. <sighs> Good morning, ma'am. How are you? Uh, I can barely hear you. I'm going to have to let somebody know the sound from the school this off. Actually, ma'am, that might not I, be a bad thing. There's something wrong with volume again. Um, I guess I'll have to let him know. Um, Last year they accidentally unplugged that, and I'm like, I can't hear my school. My volume's up all the way here, 100%. Um, okay. Morning, Post. Good morning. Ah, I heard that. Did y'all? Barely. Okay. Um, it, it's unusual not to be looking at the wall because that's normally what I would see at Post, so that's okay. It looks like a fairly small class. We are going to start because New Deal's not there, so we're going to go ahead and start without them right now, okay? So what I want to do first is I want to show you, I'm getting a message from our ITV people. Uh, oh, hey, that's better. I can see bodies in there. Have you, yes, of course I have. She said, have you checked the volume? And, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, we're going to go, I'm going to talk about black, wow, that's really close. Okay, cool. I'm used to having packs. I mean, I had like 30, 35 kids from past last year in two seconds. All right, we're going to talk about what's going to happen and how Blackboard looks differently. Have any of you ever used Blackboard before? Are, are you all incoming freshmen? Or no, you, you, you've been. Okay. All right, so Blackboard's changing. And one of the reasons is, is that we've discovered that most schools have, have uh, most folks, uh, want some uniformity because when you would go into Blackboard in an online class, they would all look different because we could do whatever we want. So now they're trying to unify what's going on with our online courses so they're easier to navigate. Um, so I can't guarantee it will happen this semester. Dual credit has to happen um, by next spring. I've gone ahead and tried to do that with both of my courses. I teach um, four sections, which are actually eight sections of 1301, and I have one monster section of sophomore college lit. It's totally online that I teach 95 seniors from Lubbock Cooper. So, yeah, interesting. All right, so when you go in, what you're going to see, I'm going to blow this up. It'll get big so you can't see it very well. Um, one of the things, when you get, when you make your screen really big, you lose the menu on the left-hand side. When you're on your computer, you'll see that they're right over here on, can you see where my cursor is? Right over here, there's actually an aqua colored line. If you lose that menu on the left hand side, look for that aqua line, see how I clicked and it came out. There's also going to be an arrow that goes this way or that. So if you want to have more less more screen space for what you're reading uh, or less. So the menu on the left hand side is going to be consistent and that entry point where you see South Plains College will be consistent. So we've got home health, course evaluation. Start here for all courses for the two weeks. They have to go into start here. Then the next section is instructor information. So, and all of these, when you go over them, you're going to see that they have lines. They're, they're active links, okay? Schedule announcements, textbooks. So um, we're going to go back over here and look at, here is start here. Um, this is a banner that covers all the classes that I teach that are 1301. So it's got all of the SPC sections are up here. If it starts with a two, it's an SPC section. You guys are section 209. 
the high school is going to be section 444. Welcome, New Deal. Um, we're basically, hi. Okay, I need a roster, please, New Deal. Help me out there. Um, I need, and you guys are section 444 at the high schools. So when you're writing stuff for me and you're putting, you have to put the section, the correct section. Because, again, 95 at Cooper and about 100, more than 100 in my high schools, I really need to know what class you're in. So if you give me the section, that should be enough. Technology requirements. Do you happen to have office on yours? No. Guess what? As a, as a South Plains College student, even the kids in the high schools, you have access to free office, office free 365. Under the technology requirements, it talks about how to access your SBC email, which you're going to need to be able to download that. But in point five, it says Office 365. You, are, uh, you have free access to Office 365. It says go to this link. You have to use your SBC username and your SBC password, and then they'll ask you for stuff, and then they'll send you a link to either download it or use the online version. And it's free. That's awesome. And the reason that's important is because Blackboard does not like Maps. It doesn't like Pages. It doesn't like Google Docs. You have to do a Word document, a PDF, or an RTF, which is rich text format. That's the only thing I can open up. Or PPT, but we don't do PowerPoints this semester, so, okay. So, um, but that's the good news. You have, oh, they're doing the pledge. Pledge, and then you have to pledge to the, uh, the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance. I was out, I went out and visited Cooper last week, um, which was four course, four sections they have out there, and I went and sat with them and got to do the pledge those days. Good, I still remember how to do it. Okay, and normally then they hit announcements. Um, okay, so that's what's in the technology section. You also have access to a free Adobe Reader, but it's not like you can modify a document anyway. So if you turn in a PDF, I can't do any, I can't make changes on a PDF anyway, so. Um, netiquette rules, we have one of the first things you're going to have to do is an introductory discussion board. Um, you be polite. I used to laughingly tell kids, oh, don't say anything you wouldn't say to your mom. My mom cusses. How about your grandma? She's worse. Your minister, I don't go to church. So just use your head. If you want to keep a job and maintain a job, don't use, you know, think of it that way, all right? So that is start here when you go into Blackboard. Come back over here. Let's go look at now the next. This in, this section is important, and it's not because it's about me. Where it says instructor information. That's if you need to get in contact with me about something. That's where you go. So if I want to talk to the instructor, I click on instructor information because that's where I have important links. Since we have to be consistent throughout, I can only put links about contacting me in here. But this is basically just information about me. Blah, 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 blah. My office hours, the number. I'm not sure why the word course shows up here after my phone number for my office. But if you need to leave me a message, you can. The issue is is that my, my, I don't office in this building. I office in building three where all the government and history classes are, okay, and English. This is the only English class that's, not, that's taught in here, okay. And I only teach in this building. So if you've got to leave me a message, do that. I have email, but there's also... And I try to respond within 24 hours. I can't absolutely guarantee that. You know, if you send me a message late on sun, Saturday night, I may not see it till late Sunday night or Monday morning. I do get a little time off, right? Okay. Um, here's an avatar of me created on South Park Studios. Yes, that South Park, okay. Um, I lost the picture that I used to have posted, so this is me. If you want to make an avatar of yourself and use that instead of the picture, you can upload pictures to your profile and colleague. So people, and that would, might scare the instructors, but it would be kind of fun to do. Communicating with me. The best is to use the course message link in this section. That's why this is important. You can use SPC email. You can use my personal email. If you use my SPC email or my personal email, you have to tell me what class you're in. Now, New Deal, you can just say I'm, in, I'm from New Deal and I know where you are. Post, you have to tell me if you're post Monday, Wednesday, or post Tuesday, Thursday. I need to know that so I can find where you belong. Um, but you guys will just need to say, uh, well, I'm in your Thursday, or you can just say 444, and that'll tell me. R right off, then I know where you are. The advantage to doing course messages is a course message is in the course. So when I come down here, you go to course messages. That's the only place you can find course messages now because we have to be consistent with that left-hand menu. 
Okay, so you click on course messages. It was really embarrassing because at 8 o'clock somebody had sent me a course message to tell me that their mics weren't working. Surprise. So, uh, look, there's one in here, and I haven't read it. It is from Megan, Introduction Discussion. I'll look at it in a minute, Megan, okay? Oh, by the way, if you if send me a course message at 10, 12 at night, I'm not going to read it till the next day. I'm, I don't, I go to sleep. I'm an old lady. I have to sleep. All right, so now I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to go back to course messages. You hit click on create a message. Megan, I'll look at that in just a minute, okay? You click two, okay? And you scroll down. You're going to see there's a list for everybody in the class. So you could technically send a message to anyone in this class. And I won't see it. I only see the messages sent to me. Thank heavens. Okay. So you scroll down and you find Thompson. I should be right before Tidwell. Okay. Slide it over there. And you have to hit the greater than sign of the two arrows. Because I have my screen so blown up, they're not side by side. But you can see how my name went over here. If I want to get rid of me, I just go back that way. Or I can. Sorry. Or lucky for me, if I want to send everybody a course message, I just click say, Click select all and then send myself back because I don't need to copy the message. But you can say uh, trouble turning in work. That's a good option because you have to turn in stuff most weeks, something every week, okay? Um, and you might say, I could not submit my essay. Don't stop there. If you can't turn in your work, I have attached it here. Look at that. What have you just done? You saved me some trouble, haven't you? So you come over here. Right down below it says Upload Attachment. Browse. Okay. Make sure it's not Pages. Make sure it's not Google Docs. Make sure it's a Word document or a PDF or an RTF. So you click on the document. You click Open. And there it is loaded in. And you click Submit. So now when I get your message, that and the essay is due by midnight, and you click and send me that message at 11.52, I know you turned it in on time, don't I? That's the nice thing. So I come back in here, and now I've got two messages. I can click on Trouble Turning in Work. I can see the message, and there's your work right there. Doesn't that make sense? You don't need to see that graphic organizer. Okay. It was just, I tried to do this out at Lubbock Cooper last week, and they have no documents. They don't want anybody saving documents on the computers. They have to save it all to Google Drive. It's crazy. That's our syllabus. We'll come back to that. So that is contacting me. Now, please, whatever you do, don't send me a course message, a SPC email, and a personal email, and leave me a phone message. All I need is one. Okay? That makes sense, right? Because if I And I'm not going to respond. If you send me three messages, I'm not going to respond to all of them. And I might not even respond to this because I get lazy sometimes. I'm a procrastinator. But if, it, if it's an issue, I'll normally say, got it. Unless you turn it in as a document, I can't open it. So that's messages. So let's, that fills out everything in instructor information. Syllabus and schedule are next. Um, this is where a copy of your syllabus is at. Oh, sorry. I need some caffeine. There it is if you, if you lose it. And you'll notice that it says 208, 209, 443, 444. That's my Tuesday, Thursday section. So um, course calendar. This is really handy. Um, it will really help you out if you're someone who's a bit of a procrastinator. Um, so these are instructions how to access it, but guess what? I just put a link in here. It was quicker. So you click on Calendar, and it's going to show you everything you have due. Now, it's going to show you everything I have due in all of my classes, which are five, sex five different courses, okay? And so that's why you see here's today's date. It's highlighted in yellow. There's what's due Thursday. My Monday, Wednesday classes have work due Thursday. You guys have it due Friday, all right? That's where the extra time comes in. We're supposed to be in class for 180 minutes a week. So for you to get your extra time, there's work due on Fridays. But you don't come to school to do it. You just do it from home, okay? And don't tell me, oh, I don't have the Internet at my house. Because what am I going to tell you? Go to McDonald's. Free Wi-Fi, right? Go to the library, it's free Wi-Fi. Most schools have free Wi-Fi in their parking lots, okay, because of COVID. If you just hit the guest thing and you can get in, all right? So don't tell me you don't have access to the Internet because you didn't pay your bills. I'm sorry you didn't pay your bills, but there are places where you can get free Wi-Fi. 
If your computer breaks down, send me a message to, to your phone. Do any of you have Blackboard downloaded on your phones? Um, I don't. I had it last year for about two weeks. But every time anybody turned anything in in my courses, I had the same number of courses. If you turned something in, if you sent me a message, I got dings on my phone. And it drove me crazy because I would have, when I had, when they had papers due, I had like 120 some odd kids in my high school classes last year. I had 120 little messages on my phone. So I turned it off. I got rid of it. I couldn't stand it. It was driving me crazy. But you can put it on your phone if you need to. It doesn't look the same. I'll just tell you it's different. Um, so if you come up here, you can go to September. For you guys, it's only going to show your courses for SPC, okay? For me, it shows everything I teach. Um, but here's September. So you can see there's a lot of stuff due on Fridays. There's some stuff during, during the rest of the week, but you guys aren't brown or burgundy, okay? That's not y'all, all right? And it goes through the whole semester. Um, and if you're just curious, this is everything, every course I've ever taught for South Plains College is here. And here are these, well, five sections, okay? That's why they're showing up. So that is syllabus and schedule. Uh, the next thing is announcements. One of the things that will show up in announcements, if you click on announcements, it will show you all of the announcements over the course of the semester. And they will be in, the most recent will be up top. So one of the things I left off of the syllabus was the grading breakdown. I do a point scale because I don't do math. Technically I am doing math, but I just did a thousand point scale. So my stand outside the door. Oh, talking to someone else. I can see hands waving. Okay. Um, there's, it's a thousand point scale. So if you have 900 points to a thousand, you get an A, 800, 890. That's math, isn't it? I just do it. I do it as a point total because I don't want students sending me a course message. What's my average in your class? Because I don't think of it as an average. I think of it as a point total. So if you have 450 points and there's still 400 points left in the class, you got a shot at a B. You better work hard, but you got a shot at a B because you got to get over 800 to get that. And yes, I will round up. If you have 895 points, I will give you an A in the class. If you have an 894, I will look and see what you scored on your papers. If you consistently, if you have more A papers than B papers, I'll give you an A. If you don't, you'll get a B. Because technically, we all know rounding up, right? You have to hit five to get rounded up. Um, and I, that was omitted, but I put it in all the courses. Um, this is if you're diagnosed with COVID. That only applies to U6. This is a welcome, all right? But what's going to show up in there later on today is I will create an announcement. And if you can't, if you guys can see at the school, I guess you can. There is a red dot up in the corner for the SVC students can see on the split screen. And it tells you this is being recorded. We record all of my classes. And it's a separate rec recording for every single section. So what I'll post in there later is a link to the YouTube video, all right? So if you miss class, you are welcome to watch the video. I'll warn you that there can be five or six minutes of nothing up front because, of, because the connection happens a little bit early. I wear black a lot, so you're going to see me a lot in black, okay? Um, but if you miss class, particularly for the high schools, they need to watch, okay? Um, the YouTube video is if you need closed captioning, if you're disabled and you can't see, can't hear, there is closed captioning, but I don't go back and correct closed captioning because if you've ever gone into YouTube videos and done ca closed captioning, they don't do very well sometimes. Sometimes it looks like it's only about 50% accurate because we talk with accents, okay? All right, so that's, in, that's uh, announcements. And then the last is textbook. Here's where your textbook's located. And that may not actually be allowed to be an option, but I put it over here for you guys because it's so you can find it easily, always. Al Albright, Albright and Langdon textbook, College Writing and Skills. Again, by doing this, you're saving 30 to 60 bucks, okay? So you go through and you look for your section number. I look for your section number. You should only show my section, okay? Um, which would be 444, 209, and 444. It's the same textbook, but they because you registered... Um, the publisher has to set them up as separate books, okay? So you just click on View Course Materials, start reading. I have 1,809 days left, okay? And it brings it in like this. It's going to show you where I last was. Yeah, I was in the middle of something. 
So when you come in, you click on the main menu and go to Table of Contents. The very first thing you have to read for tomorrow are chapters 1 and 2, and it gives you the page numbers. So you could type in page number up here. You can type in 2, and it will take you to the very first chapter that you're supposed to read, which is an, an introduction to writing. Okay. Do not click the arrows. The arrows takes you to the next chapter in the book, not the next page. That's one of the things you have to figure out. I'm going to go back over here. This is the first one. This is actually, it's divided into different sections. So this first section, that's only one page, but you can see here are the chapters in this section. So what you're going to be reading over the course of the next step is you're actually going to read all of these, okay? Um, so watch out. I'm just telling you. Uh, or you can click on these, an introduction to writing. What happens is that you're going to say, oh, that's 50 pages. You don't read every single page. You with me? There's exercises in this book. I have a hard copy sitting down here. Um, but there's a lot of exercise in it, and I don't expect you to do the exercises. It's a textbook. You read for titles, headlines, uh, bullet lists, anything, subheaders and headers. You read for those things, okay, because that gives you the main points. Um, so use your, do your reading wisely. So here are comments, but basically all of this, the four steps in a nutshell that you go through when you write, a, write an essay. So they talk about them in some detail. Um, and here's a little essay called The Hazards of Movie Going. I just want to give you a heads up on that Hazards of Movie Going. Look, right after it, though, there's a, an activity. You don't have to do the activities unless you need some work on stuff like that, okay? Uh, and so here we have a complete essay called The Hazards of Movie Going. A few years ago in an online class, I, we've been using Langan for about eight or nine, about six years, okay? I had a student who plagiarized this as their narrative, okay? And it was interesting. It wasn't called The Hazards of Moving Going. It was called, called The Difficulty of Going to a Restaurant in New York City. And so they, it was all the same, and it picked up as plagiarized. So you've got to be careful. I'm just warning you. But you can read it. It's not a bad paragraph, but they kind of show you different stuff in it. But when you go through, there's another activity. So you see there's actually a lot of stuff in here you don't have to. A lot of pages are taken up with activities. Okay. Now, what will happen in class sometimes is so we might uh, do something that requires you to have the book on hand. So if you have a laptop, bring it, and we, you can use it in class. Because I'm, you know, I have one book, and there's six of y'all in here, so the odds of me having, you know what I'm saying, you know, one person, it's hard for you to do any kind of partner work or group work if you don't have a copy of the book with you. So if you've got a laptop, bring it. Okay. Here's a good one, diagram of an essay. You don't need to read a one three one essay. Oh. Opening remarks, introduction, body, could be three paragraphs, or alias the five-paragraph essay, and a conclusion. So the benefits, this just tells you writing is a skill. But you will be tested over this chapter. And that test is this Friday. So I don't know how well you can do if you just don't even pay any attention. I don't even know if you can keep the book open and take the test at the same time. But the test, that quiz is only worth 15 points. So, and I, are there 15? There may be 15 questions. And you said on chapter 22? Yeah, and it's in the syllabus. When you look at that syllabus, it shows you there. It also shows you in the course. When we get to course content, you'll see that. But that's the textbook. So if I wanted to check out and see what was on page 475, I click on that. And we look at its prepositions, okay? So it can take you anywhere. So, you know, so if you're used to dealing with e-text at all, it's pretty handy. Uh, Kindle's not quite as friendly, I don't think. I'll be honest. And you can highlight, you can bookmark, you can make notes like that. So it's got some things you can do. And you can do speech to text. All right, so that's the textbook. Um, and the advantage in having the textbook online is that I don't have to wait for those kids at the schools to get it in a week and week and a half. And you save money. All right, so that's textbook. Let's go back over here. We're going to come back over here. I'm going to go to course content. The two most important areas are instructor information for communication and course content because that's where everything that you get in class will be in here. Okay? So week one, when you come over to week one and you open it up, yeah, y'all give me a second. I accidentally copied in um, the Monday, Wednesday, 
one instead of Tuesday, Thursday. So I've got to delete that. Yeah, I, can, I actually I did. I had to do this last time. So now I've got the right syllabus page copied in here. So in every week in course content, you actually have what's listed in the syllabus. So the syllabus and course content, the weeks are the same. So it tells you right there that you've got welcome syllabus overview, e-textbook discussion board. So we'll get to that in a minute. Read chapters one through intro, take quiz, turn in personal paragraph. We are going to cover everything about the personal paragraph on when, on Thursday. Okay. I have handouts that are already actually copied and sitting over here. Okay. I'm working way ahead. I'm not going to go over this writing process PowerPoint because you're going to be reading about it, but if you want to glance over it, you can because it may reinforce some of the things that you see in the chapter. Um, and then you, it says read chapter 9 narration in e-pages 225 through 245. One of the things I've done is I've also put in here paragraph handouts. Oh, I didn't put in the stuff about the narration. Okay, But you're going to see on the instructor view it shows everything that's due. There's the paragraph handouts, formatting documents for class. There's the discussion board. Here are the quizzes for Friday. It shows it will, those quizzes will open up at 7 a.m. One opens up at 7 a.m., one opens up at 8. They're open up till midnight because do you guys have jobs? I'm trying to accommodate you. The kids will probably take theirs during class. The high schools will do that, take it during their class time. All right? I don't know if I would try to take that on your phone. Just because phones are so small, and I don't know if I'd recommend doing it on uh, like an iPad or Kindle. I recommend doing it on a computer. It's just you're going to be safer off doing it that way, okay? Personal paragraph is due Friday, too. Yeah. So that's what it says up here, okay? So to do a discussion board, I don't know if you've ever done one. Probably have, though. Um, just click on Introductory Discussion Board. You're going to see, oh, look. That would be Alex. Okay, um, somebody's already done it. Megan's already done it, okay? So all, you, all they did was they went in and they went create a thread. You go, about me? You can put whatever on there you want to, okay? About me? Don't scream at me. Don't do all caps. And then you answer these questions up here. So you can scroll back and forth. I made sure that the instructions, what you're supposed to do, are always in the form description so you have access to it. The first one says, what was your favorite toy when you were under... Okay. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Um, so I would go to my superpower would be flying. Okay. And then you answer all five questions. And then click submit. And then you respond to three other people. This is extra credit doing this introductory discussion board. It's five points. Well, I'm going to tell you, five points doesn't sound like much. I'm not asking you to do a lot. But five points, if you make a 65 on the first paper... Now makes that a C, doesn't it? So take advantage of the extra credit point. There won't be a lot, but there are some. So if you want to respond, let's go look at Alex's, okay? Don't click on the names. That will take you to something you, you don't need to be there. Just click on About Me. And uh, here we go. Here it is, my favorite soccer ball. Never play, really played with actual toys. I have a super art would be to read people's minds. I would choose to eat pizza for my last meal. I would choose my dad to be stranded with because he's creative. I don't, honestly don't remember the last time I wrote a book. No, read a book. Oh, uh, I just wrote a book? Yeah. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You can actually go in and edit if you want to. But don't, she meant read. I am a reader, okay? So actually the last thing I read was something called The Penderwicks at Last. Uh, Jean, Jean, Jean Birdsall wrote five wonderful books about a family of girls, very contemporary. Um, and I just reread it. Now I'm, now I'm actually reading The Lost Hero by Rick Riordan. Wrote Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. He's written lots of books about mythology. Whether it's Greek, Egyptian, Norse. I expect him to go in, into, he's got another book that's coming out in October. It's not, it's going to focus on some gods, but it's a, a different, different way. So that's all you have to do. But you have to respond to three people to get the extra credit. You don't have to say, respond to each of their things. You can just say, oh, man, um, I like pizza, but, man, I'd much rather have steak or I'd much rather have Mexican food. You know, you just some kind of response. And use complete sentences, okay? So that's all you have to do to get that extra credit. Um, and go back to course content. You can a lot of times you can follow the breadcrumbs, but once you're in a discussion board, it kicks you into discussion board. So you have to go back to course content. Um, when you are in the class, I'm going to turn off. I'm turning it off of instructor mode. So when you're in week one, 
all of a sudden you're going to see that those quizzes have disappeared because they're not going to show up until the time they're set to open up, all right? But the personal paragraph is available, okay? So that, and all 16 weeks are in here, but guess what? I only have content through six, week six. That's what I was working on last night because I have to... I have to create it for Monday, Wednesday, then I have to copy it into my second section, then I have to create it for Tuesday, Thursday, and copy it into the second section. So it takes a little while to get it done. But so once you hit click, if you click on week seven, there's nothing there. But if you go back, there's the breadcrumb trail. You go into week six, you're going to see. It, that, it looks busy, but sometimes I just tell you to read chapters ahead of time. That's what tends to happen sometimes on Sundays. Turn in final of C&C essay. Okay, so that's what you're seeing, all right, which C&C is compare and contrast. So that is course content. Let's look at my grades, okay. My grades, it's going to show you everything that's upcoming that I've got loaded in for those six weeks. So you're going to see that it, it's actually set up through October 8th. So I'm over, I'm like five, six weeks ahead. Oh, I am five weeks because we're almost halfway through, aren't we? So, and you're going to see the value, and once there's a grade in there, you'll see your grade. So say you got, I don't know why it says four, it should say five, I'll have to go back and correct that. Um, you'll see if you got five out of five, I gave you credit. All you have to do is do it, and you get credit on the extra credit like that one, okay? But the personal paragraph, if you see 25 out of 30, you can click on that, and it will take you to a link to the graded document, okay? Or you might have to click over here. But that's what you do with that. So my grades is important. Don't worry about weighted total. Don't even worry about the total if it says you have 750 out of 1,000 points or if it says 750 out of 1,025 points. Just worry about your total because I'm not the best person about going putting the zero in if you don't turn something in. And if you don't turn something in, that becomes a problem. So now we're going to look at the syllabus. Oh, I need to be on the PDF. Sorry. And I'm actually at the end. Where are we at time-wise? Okay. Not too bad. We'll get through it. Um, let me make this a little bit bigger. So this tells you, this is both sections on my Tuesday, Thursday classes, um, were the 9, 950. There are the ways to contact me, my office phone, South Plains. Um, there's my personal email. Again, don't send me emails to every single one. And I'm sorry, I'm not on my computer after 9 o'clock, most likely. I'm just being honest. Uh, and there's my office hours. On Fridays, I'm going to go out and visit my high schools. I haven't set up any appointments yet. I'd like to go and see them so that they, this is a little more personal, okay, just, you know, just to help out. Um, I don't know. I've got Last Buddy, which is 90 miles from here. Not even from my house. It's 90 miles. It's about 100 from my house. So I've got, that's for one girl. I'm going to go out and visit her. But I will go to Post. I'll go to New Deal, Women Union, Crosbyton. Um, Lorenzo, I'm missing people. Well, Morton, you know, there's a lot of schools. Crosbyton, I forgot them. Did I forget them? I didn't forget them. Okay, I have a student from Crosbyton sitting with me right now. I'm not going to read that, the prerequisites. This is just about the textbook. Let me take that down just a little bit. It's a little bit too big. Okay, um, if you want to opt out, it tells you what to do, but you're going to have to pay for the full textbook. If you want to pass those quizzes, you're going to need the textbook, okay? Um, and if you have any questions about it, contact the second one. A. Gamble is the, is the person here. So that's that. All right, grading breakdown. You're going to see there's reading quizzes. There's eight at 15 points apiece. That equals 120. It's a 1,000-point scale. We saw that in Blackboard. So 120 points is 12% of the total grade. So I do percentages, but I do it so I don't have to figure them, okay? Um, outline drafts, there's three at 25 points each, 75 points, 7.5 points, okay? You're going to see all of the essays are 100 points, but look, drafts and peer revision. So that's 100 points for four drafts and four sets of peer revision. But the draft is worth 12 and a half. You turn it into me so I know you turned it in, okay? The peer revision is something that after we do peer revision, that night you have to uh, go into that particular week and send me a message in course comments, which it's a graded assignment that says, so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so looked at my papers and they told me blah, 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 blah. I thought it was pretty good comments. They sucked. I don't know. You can tell me. Nobody else is going to see it but me. If you think the person that looked at your paper was not helpful, you can say that. 
And my, my point to you will be next time, don't use that person to look at your paper if you don't think they're very good. But, again, it's not about them helping you make your paper better. One of the things that makes us a better writer is to be a reader, and we need to be able to read critically. So if somebody starts talking about in the narrative and they're going to describe their trip to Europe, and then they, start, they spend all their time on the airport, have they ever really described that trip to Europe? No. So it's about teaching people how to organize well. <coughs> so even though it says that the narrative essay is worth 100 points, there's actually another 50 points that are part of that grade, too, when we're talking about the syllabus, because you have to do an outline draft and you have to do peer revision. So every paper is worth more than 100, because you need to do those drafts. And be careful. Don't turn in stuff like There's four grammar quizzes. They're worth 25 points apiece. <coughs> and they will show up in the week where they're due. I think you have one in the third week. You have your first grammar quiz. The thing about grammar quizzes are we're going to have handouts. I don't have the handouts for grammar in the unit yet. I need to get those in there so that you have access to it. Though I will give you hard copies and we will send hard copies. I'll send um, the worksheets that I have to the schools because sometimes those are better than what it says in the book. Um, particularly with subject verb agreement, subject verb pronoun and subject agreement, and apostrophes. And that really, we only have three things we're testing over. Subject, uh, fuse, fuse sentence, fuse run on sentences, comma splices, subject to verb, pronoun and scene agreement, and apostrophes. You guys have no clue how to use apostrophes. People will write a sentence and go, um, uh, he studies all the time, and they'll put an apostrophe S. So S-T-U-I-D, S-T-U-D-Y, apostrophe S. Studies is not possessive. It's a verb. It's S-T-U-D-I-E-S. You will use apostrophes so wrong, so we actually spend time on apostrophes. But you're welcome when you take those quizzes to have the worksheets. You can have whatever you can find in the book that will help you with it. You can use stuff to take the grammar quiz. I don't expect you to memorize it because when you're writing the essay and you think, I don't know if that's right, I won't worry about it. I can't, you know. No, go ahead, and if you're not sure if it's a comma splice, go look up in, in your papers what a comma splice is. I think it's, you're more skilled if you know where to go look for the information to help you be successful. I'm, there's something going on outside in the hallway. So. so I don't call it cheating when you do that. Now, if you were to call each other and say, or if everybody, like, everybody at post would sit around and say, okay, we're all taking the grammar quiz right now. What did you get on number one? That's cheating, okay. But that comment, there are multiple choice or true-false questions. Come on. You just have to tell me if it's correct or incorrect, okay? So don't, don't try to do stuff. This is a core curriculum. Don't worry about that. We don't have to do any kind of special uh, evaluation of core curriculum, which are communication critical, teamwork, and personal responsibility. We had to do that last year at the end of the semester with all these people with COVID. Post is sitting in their auditorium so nobody catches COVID. You know, we had to try to do this. It was a mess, okay? Student learning outcomes goes on the second page. This is a brief viewpoint of or a brief description of what uh, makes an A essay. I have a more detailed one. If you like, I can get you a copy of that. Your responsibilities, particularly for you guys, is to be here on time and to be prepared for class, okay? Uh, really, and be polite, okay? And you've got to submit all assignments. Right. Absence performance policy. I do not take role for those high schools. I don't want to be the absence person for them. Um, if they miss, that's their, that's their issue. Just because you're going to go to Dallas to watch the Cowboys play, I don't care. You miss my class, you don't take a test. That's your problem. You chose to go to Dallas. Okay. Um, but for you guys, I will do keep attendance on you. I just have to because um, it's just necessary. Sorry, allergies. So you need to, um, I keep track of it. I don't give you a grade for it. It used to be when I would teach fully face-to-face -face with SEC students, I, it was a portion of the grade, but I don't do it for this. But if you miss four, have four absences, and I don't know why, there's a good chance I might drop you out of the class because you've missed two weeks of instruction out of 16. Um, I'm not that rigid about it. But if you're going to miss class, whether it's at the high schools or here, you need to let me know. Course message, I've got a flat tire. I don't I'll, I'm going to try to make it, but don't think I can. You can always watch. I'll go back and say, be sure and watch the video. We did something cool today. I had somebody tell me in my 8 o'clock class, my family's going to Florida, so I don't think I'm going to be here Thursday. I said, 
you are welcome to come to my Monday, Wednesday class at 9 or 10 o'clock and sit in that if you don't have a course. You're welcome to come to that class and make it up because if he just watches the video, he doesn't get any, he just watches a video about how to do this personal paragraph. He misses some of the interaction that we can have. Okay. I do accept late work. I'm unusual for a South Plains instructor. I will take it up to three days late. For each day it's late, you lose 10% of whatever the value of the grade is. So if it's uh, 25 points for an outline draft, every day it's late, you lose 2.5 points. So and up to three days, which is out of 25, it's seven and a half points, you're down to um, 17.5 points. You still get some. After three days, I won't grade it. So don't expect to turn it in a week and a half after it was due. And, and notoriously, I'm sorry, the high school kids want to do that. Oh, here it is. No, it's a week and a half. What good does it do you to turn in an outline after the paper was due? Uh, you know, I don't have to accept late work. So, um, and I don't have to give you gimmies. Okay, so don't turn it in late. Turn your work in because I had a student from Plainview that was in my big sophomore lit class that didn't turn work in. Said I made a junior class. I can't go to OU because of that. This is after the final exam. I said, that's not my fault. You didn't turn your work in. That's your fault. You know, we can't, we don't have the leeway that high schools have. All right, so go down here after that. We've got class decorum. We're going to behave. Um, pay attention. If you're sleeping, it gets a little irritating. The other irritating thing is that when I'm teaching and I can look up and I see the kids in the schools and they're doing this, well, if you're doing that, what are you doing? You're looking in your lap, probably at your phone, okay? And, I, you know, the cafeteria don't buy me as much. Or if you're like this, you're not paying attention to me, are you? Okay. I'm just letting you know. Now, you guys aren't going to do that because I'm in the room with you. If there's a, that, you know, you're conscious that I'm staring at you. The kids, I'm, let's see, post. Gosh, we're about 55 miles apart from post. We're about 22 to New Deal. You know, they're like, oh, she can't see me. Yeah, I can see you on your daggum phone. Get mad at Miss Hockenberry for not slapping y'all and taking it up from me, okay? All right? So be careful. Um, and if I have to holler at you, I will, or I will contact your, your facilitators and your counselors because I have them for both schools at this point. I'll let them know if you are not paying attention in class because you're not going to be successful. All right, plagiarism, that's the next big one. Uh, you're expected to do your own your work. Do your own work. If you turn in work that shows up that somebody else has done it, it's called plagiarizing if you don't give them credit. Um, I will say, last year at one of my schools, I had a student turn in a, an argumentative essay that a sibling had turned in to me four years previously. It showed up as plagiarized. Guess what that student got on the grade? It got a zero. That's the only time they did it. If you plagiarize once, I'll give you a zero on the assignment. Don't ask me if you can rewrite an assignment once you screw up. I've gone over plagiarism. If you didn't pay attention, that's your problem today. I've told you what plagiarism is. Ask your teacher, English teachers at your schools. You guys can ask me. Don't turn in somebody else's work. Um, if you plagiarize a second time, I'll give you an F in the class. I'm reluctant to give somebody an F over once plagiarizing. Um, I try to be accommodating a little bit. Um, so, and the other thing is, is if you write an essay in this class and you think you can use it in another class and it's turned in, it can show if it's plagiarized in another class even though you're the person that wrote it. Okay? That's kind of quirky, but it can happen. Um, in the, uh, I have in the past, somebody took 1301 and failed it, so they're in my class taking it again. And so they turn in a paper they turn in in that previous 1301 class, and it shows up that they've already turned it in once. That's plagiarism, even though you're plagiarizing yourself, because it might not exactly fit my assignment. So be careful. And don't feel bad. I had a student at Cooper last year turn in a PowerPoint presentation project, from, and it was the same project that somebody in the same class he's sitting in turned in two days before him. So it happens. That student eventually was dropped out of the class because he just kind of, he kind of went, oh, I'm not going to be able to make a good grade. So he dropped it. So, Okay, cheating. Again, the only thing you can really cheat on are the grammar quizzes. And if you're going to that much trouble, 
you know, it used to be, I, the quizzes used to be harder because you would have to correct the sentence and rewrite it. And I thought, because then I'd get people writing the exact same sentence. So I'm like, ah, they're sitting next to each other because they're at the same school, if I can tell. After a while, I can tell that. Okay. The other thing about plagiarism is if all of a sudden you've written stuff and it's, it sounds like an 18 to 21 year old, and all of a sudden it sounds like an English teacher, that's a good clue you didn't write it. Okay. So, but it happens. So don't worry about it. Code of conduct. We're all supposed to learn disability. If you have any kind of a learning disability, you need to go to student services. They will contact me with the information. I can make accommodation. The same goes for the high schools. I do tend to have one or two a semester at the high schools. You know, somebody might just have um, need an extended reading time or something, but most of my stuff is set up that you've got plenty of, you have plenty of notice when stuff's coming up, okay? So um, I kind of get around it that way. Uh, let's see, here we have discrimination. I don't discriminate against any of those reasons up there except for stupidity, like turning in your brother's paper, okay? That's stupid. If they were in my class, don't turn in their work, okay? Because I've been teaching some of these schools for a long time. Uh, diversity, I like the fact that there's so many different people in the class. You guys keep me young. If I use slang and it sounds stupid, tell me. I'll probably use it intentionally then, okay? Um, campus concealed, you gotta be 21 to even have a gun, so we're pretty safe, nobody's over, nobody's over 21? Okay, we're cool, don't have to worry about it. Um, so here, when you go and look at course content, now you look at this, you're gonna see they match up exactly. Um, I just have to get some of the grammar stuff put in the units. What I may do is I may go into, there's a course resources in, in the Blackboard course, and I, additional, yeah, it says course resources. I'll probably put a folder in there that says grammar unit and just copy that. It's an easier way to do it. I'll try to put them in individual weeks, but I can't guarantee I'll get all that done. But I will have a grammar unit in there. So uh, course resources actually does have connections to SVC tutors. You can, you guys have advantage. You can use it. There will be tutors on this campus and online you can use. But there's also something called tutor.com. Tutor.com is an online Source, they're available from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. You can make an appointment. You can upload your paper, that, and you've got to give them the assignment, too, so they know what you're doing. Um, but it's 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., Monday through Thursday, and then 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you've got access. You get 180 minutes a week of tutoring that's part of your tuition. And that goes for the kids at the high schools, too. I also apparently have put those in here twice because I like it so much. But Purdue Owl is the, primar the premier writing center in the world. That is Purdue University, and OWL stands for Online Writing Lab. So um, they've got a, and actually what it does is it takes to, to their MLA link, which is pretty handy. The only other thing I want to go over very quickly is because we've got through the syllabus, is I want to talk about creating documents for class. If you go into week one, one of the options is formatting a document for class. You download the document. This is already set up correctly for you. It's set up as double-spaced. It has the heading in there. All you have to do is change your name to whatever your name is. And please do first name, last name. Don't do last name, first name. That's confusing. Okay. Uh, there's my name. It's English 1301. Change 159 to, whether, to either uh, 209 or 444. And the date is always day, month, year. Your first assignment is personal paragraph. Then you begin the paragraph with whatever you're going to start with. But paragraphs always indent. I don't like the star test because if you're doing it on the computer or writing in a little booklet, you have limited space. So your teacher just said, don't waste space indenting paragraphs, right? Guess what? That indention on a paragraph is an organizational si signal to the reader. Your conference is so scheduled to end in two minutes. So if you turn in your personal paragraph and you haven't indented the first thing, I'm going to go, you didn't indent your paragraph. I spent a minute and a half talking about this in class and you didn't do it, which means you didn't pay attention. But be sure on this doc sample document that you change it. And you don't have to use Calibri. I think Calibri is a boring font. I'm going to be honest. If you, you are welcome to use Times New Roman. If you do Times New Roman, use 14 point. It's the only 14 point you can use. I like the little serifs on it, the little ends, extra lines at the ends. It just makes it look prettier, okay? Calibri is kind of boring. Uh, and really, that's what you can do. So that's all I've got for today. On Thursday, 
I will have documents. I'll be sending them out to my facilitators today to get copied. I have copies for you guys that I'll hand out in class on how to um, basically paragraph organization because one of the things that goes by the wayside with that STAR test is on the STAR test you can put your thesis at the end of it. I'm like, excuse me, that's not college writing. You don't put your thesis at the end. It should be the end of your introduction. Paragraphs should have topic sentences. So what we're going to write first that's due this week is a, to is a personal paragraph, and we're going to talk about that very specifically about what it says five minutes remaining. Wow. Okay. Well, I know New Deal's already gone. Post, you guys got to head to class. Go. I'll see you all Thursday. You guys are lucky. It's, so you're going to see, if you go watch the recordings, there'll be some dead time at the beginning and some dead time at the end because they, they, they probably set it up to try to go extra just in case anything happens, all right? So if you have any questions, ask me. It looks like there's a lot due the first couple of weeks. Once we get past that, it slows down. But I'm trying to be very specific on that syllabus to help you out. My suggestion is if you're not very well organized, is get one of those weekly planners for school. Your conference is now over. Classes, Goodbye. Put in what's due on every day. Okay. Or go into the course. See, not everybody is good about doing their stuff in Blackboard right now. They actually are paying us money to update our course. Okay. See, the connection we did last five minutes did it last about two. Bye. Have a great day. I'll see you Thursday. Okay. If you're going to drop the course, raise your hand. I'm not hard. I just, if you do your work and turn it on on time, you should be able to pass. Okay. Yes. On my schedule, for this class, it says from 9 to 9.50, and then it says 9.50 to 10.50. No, that's, they have to put that in there to show. It's, that's what the Friday computer work is. Oh, okay. That's why there's no Friday. Do not come Friday. I okay. will not be here. And then, um, that's, building two, how far is that? From okay. Um, or have you got a car? Yeah. Okay. So your best bet is to go back to the main entrance, and then you can curve around. There's what looks to be a chapel. Okay. You can go straight past it and then curve that way, and you'll see building three is over here, building two is over here. Oh, okay. It is a big building. It's the math building. You got oh. math coming out? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, that's my best bet. Oh. There, um, there might be, you can check, there might be some maps out here. It'll show you the indication. If I go over here and 